Training Command Newport. Welcome to the graduation ceremony for Officer Candidate School Class 01 TAC 25. I'm Lieutenant Paul, the Assistant Class Officer of Class 01 TAC 25. Over the past 13 weeks, the class team has been responsible for morally, mentally, and physically developing today's graduates to serve as professional naval officers worthy of special trust and confidence. The 01 TAC 25 class team also includes lead class officer, Lieutenant Atkinson, class recruit division commander, Chief Petty Officer Rummel, and class drill instructor, Gunnery Sergeant Casper. Guests are encouraged to take photographs from the seating area at any time during the ceremony, except during the playing of the national anthem. The order of events for today's ceremony is as follows. At 10 o'clock, Captain Austin Duff, United States Navy, Commanding Officer, Officer Training Command, Newport, and Captain Peter Halverson, Chief of Staff, Naval War College, will arrive. The guests and class will rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem and the invocation. The commanding officer and guest of honor will then address the graduating class and administer the oath of office. The graduates will then be recognized through the presentation of their commission by the guest of honor. The guests will rise for the playing of the service songs and the final dismissal. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the national anthem and the invocation. Officer Training Command Newport, arriving. Captain, United States Navy, arriving. Ladies and gentlemen, now the National Anthem. Chaplain Everts will now offer the invocation. Bold enough to have the 
the ownership of what they are called to do, even when they are called into harm's way. So as these officers look to the horizon, prepare them for the challenges that lie ahead, giving them the physical, mental, and spiritual readiness to meet each one with confidence. So as we continue to celebrate this moment, we ask for your spirit to reside with us and all those who stand to watch this day. This day. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ready, three. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Austin Duff, Commanding Officer, Officer Training Command Newport. Ladies and gentlemen, Rear Admiral Nowakowski, Brigadier General Campbell, Captain Castellano, Captain Lewis, Colonel Cannon, Captain Simon, Captain Rahab, distinguished guests, visitors, service members, Officer Training Command Newport staff, family members, and most importantly, soon to be commissioned officers of Class 01 TAC 25. Good morning. Good morning, sir! I'm excited to welcome our 116 newest graduates into one of the most challenging and fulfilling careers, that of a Naval officer. To the family and friends joining us, I applaud you for the great work you did in preparing these impressive young leaders prior to their arrival here. Your love, support, and encouragement have produced these remarkable individuals seated here today. It has enabled them to make sound choices, and we are grateful to have these graduates and their choice to serve. They could not have gotten to this point without the guidance and support of family and friends. On behalf of the Navy and a grateful nation, please accept my most sincere thank you. To the graduates here today, I am proud of each and every one of you. You all had many other options other than volunteering to serve your country, yet you chose this path. I thank you for that patriotism and your willingness to serve. I assure you that a life of service holds many rewards and will bring you great fulfillment. Extremely well done on earning honor company distinction for each of your three companies, and most impressively, your same class has start to finish retention of 87.9%. 23 years ago, nearly to this day, I was in your shoes. You've completed, as we did then, rigorous military, academic, and physical training. You overcame obstacles. Nothing was handed to you except opportunity the opportunity to make something more of yourself, to learn, to grow, and to lead. You seized that opportunity, and today, you reap its rewards. You can and will achieve amazing things, and I congratulate each and every one of you for this significant and memorable achievement. It is now time to embrace a new opportunity, to lead what is truly our nation's most precious resource, the sailors in the fleet. In the years ahead, your knowledge and leadership skills will be tested. You will be standing watch and working around the world and working alongside fellow officers and sailors Know that you're going to be doing significant and meaningful work for your country. Work hard. Learn the warfare and professional skills of your designator. Strive to be the best and give your country your 100% effort because nothing else will suffice. The Navy expects the best from you. The highest standards of personal and professional conduct. Excellence in leadership and a strict adherence to the Navy's core values of honor, courage, and commitment. I applaud your accomplishments and perseverance. You are about to embark upon a great adventure, one in which I hope you find both professional success and personal fulfillment. It will be unlike any other job you might have had. Regardless of how long you serve our nation, it will most assuredly be a time in your life upon which you will look back with much pride and satisfaction. Congratulations to each and every one of you. I wish you fair winds and following seas. It is now my privilege this morning to introduce to you our guest of honor, Captain Peter Halverson, Chief of Staff of the United States Navy, uh, Naval War College. Captain Halverson graduated with distinction with a Bachelor's of Science in Mechanical Engineering from the U.S. Naval Academy in 1998. He graduated from Oxford University with distinction in 2000 with a Master of Philosophy in Economic and Social History. He then graduated in 2005 with a Master of Arts in National Security Studies from the Naval War College. He's been published in the Journal of Strategic Studies, the U.S. Naval Institute of Proceedings, and the National Journal Online. In addition to being well-educated and a writer, he's a career surface warfare officer whose operational assignments include command of USS Kearney, DDG-64, and Destroyer Squadron 26. His leadership is essential to the continued success of the world's greatest Navy, 
We are privileged to have him here with us today to share his thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, please well, join me in welcoming our guest of honor today, Captain Peter Halverson. Captain Duff, thank you for that introduction. Admiral Nokowski, General Campbell, Captain Duff, Captains, Colonels, Master Chiefs, and Chief Master Sergeants, and most especially those of you who are shortly to, com to commission as the newest ensigns in our United States Navy. Thank you for the opportunity to provide brief remarks to you today. I'm honored to be here, and I, I have a confession that this is my first commissioning, uh, so uh, this is a wonderful opportunity to, for me. When Captain Duff and I traded notes about today, he confirmed that today was a really big day for not just everyone in the audience, but for the families as well. I am also aware that in 10 years, or maybe even a year, you probably won't remember who was your guest speaker at your commissioning, but I do hope that you remember how today made you feel and the central themes of the speech. First and most importantly, congratulations. Congratulations on reaching the end of the first of many challenges that you will face in your career. The last 13 weeks have tested you and found you ready to commission. It won't be the hardest thing you ever do, but it will set the foundation for your future success, and that's been established here in Newport. And the friendships that you've made here will, in fact, last a lifetime. Second, thank you for volunteering to serve, for being ready to raise your right hand swear an oath to defend the Constitution and the United States of America. Such a small sliver of our population here in the United States has done that. And I hope you and those here to support you today are rightly proud of your service. Whether you are affirming your commitment after entering the Navy right from college, or reaffirming your commitment after years of enlisted service, thank you. I also think it's incumbent upon me to thank all of those who have supported you to get here today whether that's your parents, spouses, partners, friends, or extended family. After all, what has become a truth to me after 26 years in uniform is that we do what we do in order to defend our nation and those that we love. But it's those that we love that allow us the opportunity to serve and continue our service. And for the Navy you're commissioning into, your service has the potential to be the most consequential of the generation. Because you very well may be the junior officers on the front lines during conflict with another great power. The global security environment, which has never really been quiet, is perhaps more fractious than ever, particularly in the maritime bank. For the first time since World War II, there's general state-on-state -state conflict in Europe. There's a major war in the Levant, and for the first time ever, our surface ships are routinely using their entire arsenals to defend themselves and others in the Red Sea and the Eastern our CNO, Admiral Frank Eddy, and her navigation plan for the Navy rolled out right here in Newport at the Naval War College last month, very clearly stated that the North Star for our Navy must be readiness for sustained high-end joint and combined conflict by 2027. That's in three years. Make no mistake, officers commissioned today could very well be the pilots flying missions in the Western Pacific or the division officers leading sailors on the deck plates during I say that not for any shock value, particularly for the families, but uh, more from uh, the perspective of an old swo sea dog, but rather to solidify in your minds the stakes of our profession, and so that you walk into your training checks and your next assignments with a clear-eyed vision of what the Navy and our nation expect of you. So against that backdrop, let me offer what I believe to be the most important things I've distilled from my years in service, and what I would tell Ensign Halverson if I had the chance to go back to 1998 and offer myself some thoughts. First, be a consummate professional and learn your platforms. Second, take care of your people. And third, leadership ain't about you. First, professionalism. It is the margin of excellence that will, I am absolutely confident, cause the United States Navy to win any conflict forced upon us. We have cool kit. We have phenomenal platforms. But the most important thing we have is a professional Navy that knows how to use their systems and constantly strives to train, to improve, and to get better. As a junior officer, that is your first task. Become an expert in your specialty. Learn how to fly, how to sail, how to cyber, or whatever verb your designator requires. Learn those things as best as you can. Become a professional. 
Not only will that earn you the trust and respect of those that you lead and those who lead you, but you'll be able to deal with adversity or complexity whenever it occurs. As an executive officer and commanding officer in Commodore, I was constantly amazed at the skills and professionalism of the junior officers who I was privileged to lead. I have too many examples to pick from, but I'll give you just a few. I remember walking into CIC during Naval Surface and Fire Support missions off of Libya, off of Libya, and seeing my gunfire liaison officer, a 23-year-old, 23-year-old second tour divo, calmly talking to a Marine fire support nation cell on the radio, and then leading her team to execute fire support missions ashore. And I found myself pretty much confined to just say, great job team, keep it up. I remember a rough night of shipping, heavy shipping in the Black Sea, followed by a transit of the Bosphorus and Dardanelles the next day, where I watched my navigator take the ship through restricted waters without any assistance, uh, like a complete professional and like he was commanding the ship. And several years out of command, just a few months ago, I was here in Newport walking the decks of USS Kearney when it stopped after its recent deployment to Scene, listening to a first tour division officer, only about two or three years her senior, who didn't even have her swoop in yet. And she was talking to me about how she maneuvered the ship as an officer of the deck to unmask her weapon systems during missile flight in the Red Sea. Those JOs knew their stuff. They are professionals in every sense of the word. And you will be them in a few short months. Second, take care of your people. We win because of our sailors, and they are the one resource that is more important than any other. This is something that I've heard from the time I was commissioned, and I wish I had understood it a little bit better as a junior officer. Too many JOs, and I admit I was probably one of them, interpret taking care of your people as making sure that they're happy. That's part of it, but it's not all. You absolutely need to be concerned about your sailors' pay, quality of service, and work-life balance. As a division officer, that's a fundamental part of your job. But you also need to make sure that your sailors are equipped with the skills and training to do their jobs, that they are meeting their qualification timelines, that the mission is met, and that they are accountable to themselves, their shipmates, and their ship, squadron, submarine, or unit. That's a hard balance to strike. But remember that you are not in it alone. Whenever you're in doubt, ask for advice from your chief, leading petty officer. They should help you get the balance right. Third, and probably the most simple bits of my advice, leadership ain't about you. Success in the Navy really isn't your success. You need to be in it for the success of the organization, for the success of those that you lead, and for the success of the Navy at large. The quickest way to lose faith with those that you serve, uh, those that you serve with and those that you lead, is if you're making decisions for what will benefit you. That isn't what we're about. Our Navy is built on trust. And those that you lead have to believe through both word and action that you have the best interests of the unit, the Navy, and, the, and their success at the forefront of your thoughts. Those of you that have prior enlisted service know that to be true. Finally, as I close up my remarks, let me offer a little bit on the lighter side. Please remember to try to have fun. When I was growing up, one of the Navy's mottos was, join the Navy, see the world. And I wish, in a way, I really wish we still used that. Because it is, in fact, fundamentally true. Through the Navy, I've been to more than three dozen countries. I've seen the sun set on, every, on almost every ocean and sea of the world. We're still looking for the Arctic. And I've made friendships that were forged through both adversity and incredible experiences like port visits, great days at sea, and so much more. I wouldn't still be in uniform if this career wasn't rewarding, meaningful, and for the most part, fun. I hope you find the same joy in service. With that, congratulations again on this first professional milestone. Good luck. graduating class will now receive the oath of office. Would all military personnel in uniform please come to the position of attention. Class, raise your right hand.
repeat after me. I state your name. I Having been appointed an ensign in the United States Navy. Having been appointed an ensign in the United States Navy. Do hereby accept such appointment and do solemnly swear. Do you hereby accept such appointment and do solemnly swear? That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. The duties of the office on which I am about to enter. The duties of the office on which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ready, Steve. We will now recognize the individual awardees for their achievements. Our distinguished naval graduates will be recognized for receiving an overall OCS grade average in the top 10% of their class, while accruing fewer than 10 demerits during training here at Officer Training Command Newport. The Commander Jack Levitt Leadership Award is presented to the officer chosen by their peers who most inspired their class and personifies the highest standards of personal example, sound management practice, and moral responsibility. This award is being presented to Ensign Burnside. Ensign Burnside has been designated as a student naval aviator. The Chapel Clardy United States Marine Corps Physical Fitness Award is presented to the officer who achieved the highest overall grade in physical fitness. This award is being presented to Ensign Yeager. Ensign Yeager has been designated as a student naval aviator and is a distinguished naval graduate. The Rear Admiral Stephen B. Luce Academics Award is presented to the officer who has achieved the highest academic average. This award is being presented to Ensign Cannon. Ensign Cannon has been designated as an intelligence officer and is a distinguished naval graduate. The Lieutenant Thomas E. D. Honor Award is presented to the officer who has achieved the highest overall average in academics, military training, and physical fitness. This award is being presented to Ensign Atkins. Ensign Atkins has been designated as an intelligence officer and is a distinguished naval graduate. We will now recognize the remaining graduates. Ensign Pollitt has been designated as an aerospace maintenance duty officer and is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Terrace has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Winthrop has been designated as an aerospace maintenance duty officer. Ensign Juba has been designated as an information professional officer. Ensign Hamby has been designated as a surface warfare officer. Ensign Hunt has been designated as an aerospace maintenance duty officer. Ensign Vincent has been designated as an intelligence officer. Ensign Aldridge has been designated as a student naval aviator and is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Baker has been designated as an aerospace maintenance duty officer. Ensign Batista has been designated as an intelligence officer. Ensign Bender has been designated as an intelligence officer. Ensign Brady has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Bronson has been designated as an intelligence officer. Ensign Buckholz has been designated as a student naval flight officer. Ensign Buckaloo has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Burton has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Carlson has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Casanova has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Castro de Colon Ruiz has been designated as a cryptologic warfare officer. Ensign Chitty Berry has been designated as an aerospace maintenance duty officer. Ensign Cheval has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Cole has been designated as an intelligence officer. Ensign Khan has been designated as a student naval aviator and is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Kaneen has been designated as a student naval aviator and is a distinguished naval graduate. 
Ensign Cooper has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Cox has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign D'Andrea has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Dillard has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Domkey has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Driscoll has been designated as a student naval flight officer. Ensign Dermis has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Duval has been designated as a public affairs officer. Ensign Farahani has been designated as an aerospace maintenance duty officer. Ensign Fitzsimmons has been designated as a student naval flight officer. Ensign Fleenor has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Garrett has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Gleason has been designated as a surface warfare officer. Ensign Gray has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Gualdi has been designated as an aerospace maintenance duty officer and is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Guzman has been designated as a surface warfare officer. Ensign Haber has been designated as a surface warfare officer. Ensign Hafer has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Harper A has been designated as an intelligence officer. Ensign Harper B has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Higgins has been designated as an intelligence officer. Ensign Holt has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Honda has been designated as a submarine nuclear officer. Ensign Hopkins has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Hostler has been designated as a submarine nuclear officer. Ensign Hubbard has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Johnson K has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Johnson T has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Jerica has been designated as a surface warfare officer. Ensign Clint has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Knudsen has been designated as a nuclear surface warfare officer and is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Kepin has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Coet has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Coots has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Kwok has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Kwiatkowski has been designated as an intelligence officer. Ensign Langlois has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Lerf has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Luce has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Lovato has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Luxick has been designated as a student naval aviator and is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Lyon has been designated as a student naval flight officer. Ensign Margrave has been designated as a student naval aviator and is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Martinez has been designated as a cryptologic warfare officer. Ensign Mao has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign McCartney has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign McClanahan is awaiting designation. Ensign McConkey has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign McKenna has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign McLean has been designated as a nuclear surface warfare officer. Ensign Metzger has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Miller has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Minjares has been designated as a nuclear surface warfare officer. Ensign Ndepo Sadu has been designated as an information professional officer. Ensign Nichols has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Palumbo has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Paulson has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Peck has been designated as an intelligence officer. Ensign Pelish has been designated as an intelligence officer. Ensign Perez has been designated as a surface warfare officer. Ensign Perry has been designated as an information professional officer. Ensign Poirier has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Ponder has been designated as a student naval aviator. 
Ensign Preeti has been designated as an intelligence officer. Ensign Razo has been designated as an intelligence officer. Ensign Richter has been designated as a Civil Engineering Corps officer. Ensign Roberts has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Rodriguez has been designated as an intelligence officer. Ensign Sanchez has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Schwartz is awaiting designation. Ensign Sankudmani has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Shake has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Sorrell has been designated as an information professional officer. Ensign Stowe is awaiting designation. Ensign Thomas has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Thorson has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Tokager has been designated as a maritime cyber warfare officer. Ensign Tripp has been designated as an intelligence officer. Ensign Turbine has been designated as a surface warfare officer. Ensign Tysoner has been designated as an intelligence officer. Ensign Urbina has been designated as a student naval aviator and is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Vogt has been designated as an intelligence officer. Ensign Waller has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Way has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Williams has been designated as an aerospace maintenance duty officer. Ensign Wilson B has been designated as an intelligence officer. Ensign Wilson S has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ensign Macy has been designated as a student naval aviator. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing the United States Navy's newest officers. service songs and the final dismissal. photo, and remember the only authorized visitor locations are K Hall and the Nimitz PT Field. On behalf of the commanding officer, thank you for attending today's ceremony. <laughs>